Welcome to D&D Automation's Tech Leader Training Labs. The following lab is the Basic Device Net Training Lab. This lab is broken up into three parts. In part one, we will create and download a new Control Logics program with an Ethernet card and Device Net card in the chassis. Part two, we will review the wiring and setup of a Device Net network. Part 3, we will configure the network using Ars Networks for DeviceNet and test the installation. Let's start with Part 1. First, start Ars Logics 5000. To start a new project, go up to the menu and click File, New. A new controller window pops up. First, select the controller you will be dealing with. In my case, I will be using the 1756L55 processor. Next, select the revision. In my case, the revision is 12. The processor type and revision number can be found on the side of the module. Give the processor a name. This will also become the name of your project. You can also add a description explaining the purpose or function of the project. Next, select the chassis type you will be using. In my case, I will be using the four slot chassis. Enter the slot in which the processor will reside in. Keep in mind, the first slot beside the power supply is slot zero. Please be aware that the Control Logics processor can be placed in any slot in the Control Logics chassis. In my case, I've chosen to put it in slot zero. You can browse to the directory in which you want your project to be saved. Then click OK and your project will be generated. You will notice the name of your project is the same that you typed in for the name of your processor. Next we will add the other cards in our chassis to the I.O. configuration. In slot 1 I will be using an Ethernet card to communicate between my computer and the processor. In slot 2 will be the device net scanner. Slot 3 is not being used. Keep in mind these cards can be placed in any slot in a Control Logics chassis. First, right click on IO configuration, then select New Module. The Select Module dialog box pops up. Both your device net and Ethernet cards are communication modules. Click the plus sign beside Communications. Scroll to find the Ethernet card in which you will be using. In my case, I will be using the 1756ENBT-A. Click OK. Next, you are asked for the major revision. Both the model number and revision can be found on the side of the card. You must give each module a name. I will call this one Ethernet. You can also add a description. This may come in handy when there are multiple communication modules in the same rack. The description can help the user differentiate between the modules. Enter the slot number in which the module resides. In my case, the Ethernet card is in slot 1. Enter the IP address of the Ethernet card. In my case, the IP address is 192.168.100. 47. If an IP address has not been set for your card, use the Rockwell software boot P server to assign a temporary IP address and then use RS links to make the address static. Click OK and click OK once more and your Ethernet card has been added. We will repeat the same steps for adding the device net scanner card into slot 2. Right-click on I.O. Configuration. Select New Module. Click the plus sign beside Communications. Scroll to find the device net card, 1756DNB. Click OK. You are asked for the major revision, which again can be found on the side of the card. Each module needs a name. I will call this one DeviceNet. 
You must assign a node number to the scanner. The node number can be any number from 0 to 63. However, you cannot have two nodes with the same address. In my case, I will leave the scanner as node 0. I will also ensure that my scanner is in slot 2. All other default settings are OK. Click OK. Click OK once more, and my device net card has been added to my I.O. configuration. By adding the device net scanner to your I.O. configuration, the tags are automatically generated for the device net network. To view these tags, double click on controller tags. Because I added my scanner to slot 2, the tags are called local colon 2. Colon I is for inputs. Click the plus sign beside local colon 2 colon I, and then click the plus sign beside local colon 2 colon I dot data. Below this is listed all of the device net real world inputs. Similarly, for outputs, expand the local colon 2 colon O, and then the local colon 2 colon O dot data. Listed below are all of the real-world device net outputs. Next, expand the plus sign beside main program. Then double click on main routine to open up a ladder file. Next, we will add and examine on contact and type the address local colon 2 colon i dot data square bracket one, square bracket dot zero. We will also add a coil to this first rung and add the address local colon two colon o dot data square bracket two square bracket dot zero. We will use this rung to test our device net communications in a later lab. Save your program before we download to the processor. Next, click Communications and then Who Active. Expand your Ethernet driver to find the Ethernet card in your rack through the back plane to find the processor you wish to download. Once you click on the processor, the download button becomes active. Click download. If there is already a program in the processor, a warning will appear asking if you are sure you want to overwrite the old program. If you have an old program saved somewhere else or do not require the old program, then click download again. The downloading is taking place. And yes, we will put the controller back to run mode. Congratulations, you've completed part one of the basic device net lab. Please proceed to part two.